Funding now on Indiegogo, it's Shadowbinders, our second chance offer to get two hardcovers of our classic webcomic delivered to your door. Steampunk, fantasy, and romantic comedy from Clownfish Comics. Go to Indiegogo, check out the link in the description below. Now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do a good news video. A good news video for once. Yeah, my friend Sarah had actually mentioned uh, about Beagle and stuff to me before. Yeah, so the author of The Last Unicorn, Peter S. Beagle, for those of you who have been following his, his very uh, sad situation, we'll go over that a little bit here in this video. He's finally reclaimed his rights to his work. Uh, he was not getting paid. He was taken advantage of by agents and business partners. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about his situation and sort of reiterate why you really want to own your shit. Yes. Uh, I guess that's about as blunt as I can make it. You really want to own your stuff. You got to be very careful when you're making deals, especially when it comes to IP. And a lot of people jump at the opportunity to get their stuff made or whatever, not realizing that they could tie up their rights for decades yeah this and, happens all the time people are like oh i finally got a deal but that not, might not be the deal you you need yeah or you want yeah you might be better off just doing it on your own and i've got some good examples of people here who have done it on their own including todd mcfarlane who's uh supposedly got a net worth of like 300 million dollars i didn't think he was worth that much but uh he's got several companies he took his mm -hmm. took his self-published comic book and he started several companies with See, it this sounds like us top yeah. of front, like hell i won't yeah that's why mom used to joke if you tell me not to do something i'd go do it i'd be like you watch me <laughs> you know, so i do it one of the smartest men in comics hands down uh you know again taking his profits and plowing them into himself wait that sounds bad uh, <laughs> taking his profits <laughs> and starting other companies and hiring the right people. Uh, he started his comic, Spawn, and then you know after, I don't know, it was like 20 or 30 issues, I think, he stepped away from it and let other people draw it. He still oversaw it, but then he was like, okay, now I'm gonna go start a toy company. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna go start a movie studio. And now I'm gonna go start this, go start that. That's and I'm how gonna... you win it go. Yeah, and uh, very, very smart, and he owns all of it. He's fine, He doesn't. he's not dependent on Hollywood. Uh, he has his own little bubble. Yeah, I would and, never be um, dependent on Hollywood. I think George Lucas made that abundantly clear, too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we're going to talk about what happened to Peter S. Beagle. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 183,000 subs. Woo! Hoping for 200,000 soon. Hit this subscribe button. Something's going on on YouTube. We're not getting subs as fast yeah, as we Yeah, it's been like, yeah, it's, it's really weird. Because the hits are still there. But the subs aren't there. Something strange is going on. You know, we started, I'm just, I'm just putting this out there. I don't know for sure what's going on, but we started to slow down about the same time that other channels were complaining about getting false flagged mm -hmm. by certain groups of people mm -hmm. uh, that don't like certain uh, re-rees certain re who, who don't like, uh, you know, anti Star Wars channels or however they, they view it. Um, that's about the time our sub count started slowing mm -hmm. down. Now, we haven't had any videos flagged or taken down or anything like that, but it is conceivable that uh, maybe YouTube's not recommending our content as much. Something, I don't know. Something's weird. Anyway, let's talk about The Last Unicorn, one of Rankin Bass's best things ever. Uh, love this movie. I remember when it, when it was out and they had it like... Didn't they have it on TV? Did they have the whole thing in one chunk or did they do it like they did with other things where it was... I think it was a one chunk. I think it was... It? it used to be on HBO a lot. It was yeah. on... I think it was on Disney Channel before too. I know. Too. I remember watching, going home from school we were like excited because we were going to watch it or something. I just know when, um, when Pinky Boo was little, she loved watching it and she loved the booby tree. Yes, the she booby tree. She loved the booby tree. <laughs> so. uh, they took... Yeah. So The Last Unicorn was kind of a hard book to adapt into any kind of a movie. They were talking yeah. about doing a live action movie at one point. I think they're talking about uh, Guillermo del Toro being a director, which I, I, I could, see, could though, see. I could see that. But, you know, the rights have been tied up, but he's he's gotten them back, Peter S. Beagle. Um, so before we go into how he got them back, I mean, this is sad. I remember 14, 15 years ago when the DVD came out that the only way he was getting paid off the DVD sales was if you bought an autographed copy That's bullshit. from a third party. And um, it's just, it's it's a bad situation. So this is coming from Cartoon Brew. Peter S. Beagle, the 81-year-old author of The Last Unicorn, has finally reclaimed the rights to almost all his works. Following a legal battle, 
that lasted half a decade. It's been longer than that. It's been like 15 some years. Uh, in 2015, be, okay, so he, he actually filed in 2015, but I know he was having trouble 10 years prior. This is mm. 2006. And I remember hearing about before that there was going to be a remake, but it was all tied up because of this situation. Um, so he filed suit against his ex-manager, Connor Cochran, cock indeed, <laughs> alleging elder abuse, fraud, and slander, among other claims. According to the suit, Cochran fraudulently induced Beagle to transfer his intellectual property rights to a sham corporation. Cochran was accused of taking advantage of Beagle's literary success, subjecting the author to punishing work schedules and impugning his mental health to friends and family, basically like, oh, I don't know what's wrong. He seems like he's not really You, you should put me as the you know, executor of his estate and everything mm-hmm. else. Let me be in charge. Uh, Beagle insisted at the time his health was fine, conceding only that he lacked business or financial savvy. That is that is key to any kind of creative career. Uh, the reason that guys like Todd McFarlane do well and you have other people that are arguably better artists but they're not business minded todd mcfarlane mm-hmm. is a very business minded we keep person. telling people and i and I, I will reiterate this again and again if you are in school or college for anything like anything creative take a business class and if you you aren't and you're on your own you want to do stuff there are probably online classes you can take as well you need to make sure you know what your rights are you need to make sure you know how at least somewhat understand the business so you do not like just jump the chance to get something done and then end up screwed yeah this uh, this happens so many times especially to older creators you see so many comic book artists that you know 60s and 70s they're they're out of work and they're destitute uh, a lot of them, you know, they worked as freelancers their whole lives. They didn't save money. They, I guess they thought in comics that you'd retire and get a watch. That's not how it works. Uh, that's hardly how it works for anyone anymore. I mean, most people, they said now are at jobs for like five years mm-hmm. tops. It used to be you could go work someplace and stay there for the rest of your life. And when you retired, you'd be good. You had, yeah, you you had good. retirement, you're good to go. Not anymore. That's not how it works anymore. Uh, So in 2019, the Superior Court of California ruled in Beagle's favor on four out of six cases that went to trial. Proceedings were complicated when Cochran, Cock, filed for bankruptcy. The bankruptcy court is now approved. Uh, It's approved the sale that will see the return of Beagle's body of work to an ownership group that includes the author. Uh, Beagle has reacquired certain rights with respect to The Last Unicorn, his best-selling 1968 novel, including author-driven sequels. The novel was adapted into an animated feature produced by Rankin Bass, for which Beagle wrote the screenplay. His screenwriting credits also include the 78 animated adaption of The Lord of the yeah. Rings. Uh, there are a lot of similar... Now, this is Bakshi's Lord of the Rings, but visually, because it's Rankin Bass, The Last Unicorn looks a lot like uh, their version of The Hobbit mm-hmm. and Return of the King. Mm-hmm. It's the same character designer. Yeah. It, it, you know, so they, they are very similar. Yeah. They're very similar. With the newly formed company SHP, Beagle will now work to develop projects based on his library under the Beagleverse brand. So he's going to start Aww. his own Beagleverse. <laughs> that makes me smile for whatever reason. While continuing to write new material, he's also planning to set up a nonprofit to raise awareness about elder abuse. It happens a lot. This is what happened to uh, Stan, Stan Lee. Lee. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. happens a lot. And it's it's not okay. I mean, we're talking Stan Lee, uh, you know, inarguably one of the, the biggest voices biggest personalities in the comic book industry ever you know um and he was subjected to a lot of bullshit when he was older and then there were like all these skeezy articles being written about him like being a uh he was like a, a, a sexual deviant and stuff when he was like in his 90s it's like when you're 90 some years old you're lucky if you can even get it up anymore I'm well just saying, I'm just, like, you know here's the thing i this is one thing i have very little tolerance for if you are somebody out there taking advantage of elderly people then you're just the lowest piece of shit ever sorry yeah. but you are yeah so um it was it was bad uh you know how this happened he got conned into it um so this is this is what what happened back in the day beagle's story was about an artist taken in by a con artist it's classic uh, it is classic. I mean, I heard about this on, on some level with Carl Barks. There were people were saying that his handlers were sort of. Now he did he did reap the financial rewards, but they, they he basically had people, and a lot of it is the artists are like, I don't want to deal with the business end of things. You just do whatever, make me money, and this happens. I think uh, you know with literary agents now 
and uh, comic book creators, I think a lot of times they are they're very heavy handed in their people's careers, and they want to be the ones who right. They don't call like the it. Shots. They don't like it when you when they're supposed to work for you, but they get really pissed off when you like go and make deals on your own without them. Yes, but they do. Not not that we're speaking from experience or anything. We are. Yeah, and they try totally to. We are. They try to. They try to run you down to make sure you know your place and make sure that you. It's like, won't... I'm, yeah, it's like I'm. You're working for me. Yeah. No, that's how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be that they work for you. In reality, you're just a content creator for them. Right. Exactly. You know, that's, exactly. that's usually how it works. And and when you're turning all your money over to a third party like that, you better know what the hell is going on, mm-hmm. especially if they're negotiating all the, the publishing deals on your behalf. Like, they could be telling you. I mean, who knows? I know there's ethics and stuff involved, but they could be saying, well, hey, dude, you're only getting a buck a book. Well. In reality, they're getting five bucks a book and they're pocketing four. Right, you don't you know dollar. that. Yeah. So I guess in 2001, he met Cochran and yeah. he hired him as his business manager. Yeah, thereafter, uh, Beagle claimed that Cochran assumed control of all of Beagle's business affairs, setting up a uh, publishing company in 2005, Conlon, to handle Beagle's publishing needs. Uh, Conlon claims to have delivered over th- 300,000 special Peter S. Beagle-related items in 37 countries and to have produced a successful theatrical premiere of Giant Bones, a play based on four stories from uh, one of his books. Uh, despite the success, he has lived hand-to-mouth since Conlon's inception. Uh, in 2008, Cochran convinced Beagle uh, to found another company with him <laughs> to hold the intellectual property of Beagle and other authors. Why? Why? If it went bad the first time and you've already got a company, why would you do it again? Look, it's better. He told him it was going to be a 50-50% partnership. Yeah. And then he talked him into transferring all his rights to the IP like Last Unicorn to him. Yeah. So there's been some talk on YouTube about a certain comic book publisher. And I'm not going to name names because I don't want to disparage anyone, but it, it wouldn't take too much to figure out who it is. A newer comic book publisher that part of the deal is basically they own 50% of your creation. This this is what could happen to you. Mm-hmm. You could wind up having your rights tied up forever. And this happened a lot back in the day, back in the 80s, 90s, when you know indie comics publishers were like, well, we get an ownership stake in your, your IP or whatever, and then they go under. And well, not just that. Limbo. You know, even in cartoons, we see so many shows that are created by somebody, but the studio owns it. So they kick them to the curb and then keep moving with it and reboot it and don't even bring people back that should have been brought back and all the other stuff because they don't have to. <sighs> So this is where it gets really sad. So we've got the, the author of The Last Unicorn, right? Uh, in his mid-70s, they, they, they uh, took him out on tour. And they actually had him shacking up in fans' houses rather than pay for the hotel accommodations. Are you kidding me? I mean, look at this. Uh, grueling schedule. By May 2015, Beagle had personally attended 300 screenings of The Last Unicorn in 150 different cities. Uh, oh, my goodness. 30 American states and 8 Canadian provinces. Um, on 2015, Beagle accidentally sent to Cochran an email meant for someone else discussing the possibility of what I've done. I've done that before. Not about this. No, yes. no. Discussing the possibility of filing a lawsuit against Cochran for elder abuse. On June 15th, Cochran wrote an email to Beagle's children and friends claiming that Beagle needed help because his mental condition was compromised. Mm-hmm. Um, Cochran canceled the rest of the tour. Uh, it was Beagle's medical condition, etc. cetera. Uh, so yeah, what Beagle... It, says basically he lacked business savvy and this is what happens guys is what happens when you're not business savvy and you create things that resonate with people and even the stuff you create today there is a possibility that it could be years until it actually becomes profitable Mm -hmm. it could be something you made you know in your teens or 20s and it was kind of out there and then years later somehow it gets optioned as a movie i'm thinking of like the crow or teenage Mutant ninja turtles or something like that that you know kind of took a while to you know blow up i guess big time hit the mainstream and if you make a bad deal now you could definitely pay you know, for it later pay for it later um so interesting story good story glad he got the rights back at 81 years old yes. i hope his kids have uh some kind of uh plan to make sure that the you know the rights go to the estate you know um so good on him though yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.